This photo was sent to me by um, John, and um, it's um, Connemara over in Ireland. It's a nice little scene. We've got some uh, got our hills, mountains in the background coming forward. Nice little waterfall here and a foreground um, river. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's have a quick look at the materials. So a quick whiz through the colours. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard in crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. They're all Cotman watercolours squeezed out and allowed to dry on the palette. We've got our collapsible water jar here. Three brushes, large on rance and ache, three quarter inch flat, and number three rigger. And we've got 130 pound cold press, 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. And it's clipped here to a 90 mil piece of ply, stop it uh, rattling around. Another quick look at the photograph and let's get cracking. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the large hand. Bit of water. Don't need too much, it's only to stop the paper from crinkling. So I'll just stretch a little bit while we uh, do the background. And then into the sky area, I might do a sort of sort of moody, actually let's start with a bit of raw sienna, not too much. Something like that. It's a bit dirty because I went into the Payne's Grey first. Just a bit of background colour into the uh, water, clean the brush, don't want it too wet, a bit of Payne's Grey, Ultramarine, and just pop a bit in there, a bit more blue, and I'm going to um, Grabbed a bit of tissue there. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna take out a few clouds, also lighten this area because we've got the profile of the hill there. So I want it a bit lighter than that. So you can actually see the top of the hill. And a few little clouds. Whack a few over here as well, that'll do, that'll do it. Yeah. Same colours as the sky. So a bit of raw sienna, ultramarine, Payne's grey. And then let's pop these hills in. And then just try and vary it slightly as we come down. More raw sienna. That's coming down there like that. And a bit that goes over like that. Down towards the bottom, maybe introduce just a. There's not a lot of green in this, just a little bit. So it was just a little bit stronger just to bring this near the hill closer to us. And then. Just lighten that slightly, just take a bit of tissue. Just lighten that a little bit. And in front of that, we've got a sort of middle ground, so I still haven't cleaned the brush, just going into raw sienna. But I want this. It's a little bit stronger so that it sticks out a bit more so it's just a little bit closer towards us. So I'm just gonna I've just dipped the very tips in. It was getting a little bit dry, airs were separating, just brought the airs back together. Just a tad more. If you can't get the airs, if your hairs are going all over the place, just dip the very tips into the water just to bring the airs back together and then Pop out uh, some over there. That's good enough over there somewhere. And there's like a little a little road seems to be going. Just 
Bring it down. So I'm just going to leave a very slight little gap there. That's where our road is going to cut across. And then I'll just continue that on. So you've got a little road just running through there. Or might be a path or something. Yeah, I'm not using too much water. And then over there, it just sort of goes off into the distance. So I'm just going to bring this down there. Down to the rocks and the floor. Down to our little waterfall. Just giving it a bit of a drop, to get a bit of a clean. It's all getting a bit the same. Eh? I want to get a bit more variation. Raw sienna. There it goes lighter again. If you want to get back to lighter colours, you need to clean the brush really. As long as you're using your darks, you don't really need to. A bit too many little white bits there, I'm just filling those in. You have a bit of white where you fur when it hasn't quite touched the paper. It gives you a bit of texture, adds a bit of um bit of interest but try not to leave in too many. So I've, I've come down now to where about the waterfall is. So let's uh, let's get our rock colour. So I'm going and again don't want too much water now so I'm going burnt umber ultramarine so sort of dark nice and dark Pop in some, some little rocks. And let's just get that to, and then the waterfall bit. The waterfall. Now if the waterfall's going out there. Just a very quick. You see, just fairly dry, and then just put it in very quick, and then leave. So you're what you're basically you're trying to leave plenty of white areas, and that's where. All the water sprays and back over on this side. A bit more water now because it's going a bit dry. And there's a few rocks in front of this waterfall, so it's it's come down and it's where this thing actually leads. And again, you can see my eyes are separating because I haven't got too much water on there. I don't want a lot of water. I'm sort of alternating between raw cedar, burnt on bad and ultramarine just to put in these sort of rocky colours. And then once once I've got all them in, well, that'll do. Now let's uh, let's put some uh, let's put the water in. So it's the water will be basically the same colours as the sky. So I want the I want the paint to break again. So I don't want too much water. So I'm just going um, ultramarine. Plains grey, a little bit of raw sienna, just your sky colours basically, but sort of leaning towards blue. And then, now then, where's the water? And then, what you basically what you're trying to do is a very quick sweep, very quick sweep. Leave plenty of light, break, leave the air, see how it's breaking. So you're getting the same effect as the waterfall there where the papers, the paint's breaking, so you get the light of the, the surf. Just try and work out what direction you're uh,
your water's flowing and then just sweep it in really quick. That'll do. And I'll tell you what I have forgotten to do while I was doing the rocks is get the old um, bit of card out and scrape a few in. So if it's dried, don't worry about it, just give it a little re-wet. Just re-wet it a bit. You see how it, when it does go dry, putting it on, see how stronger the tones go. So if you want to get it darker and darker, don't just keep putting paint upon paint upon paint. You've got to wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, then put the paint on and it'll go darker and darker. You're, pretty, you're trying to put layers on. You can't put another layer on until it's dry. So I'll just re-wet those. And then let's just pop a few little, few little rocks here and there. Just nice and small, keep them small, don't put them too big. Few up on the bank. Few more on this bank here. Once you get going, it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop. I put our stretch a little, so I'm just going to refix it. So I've got like little, little fence posts or something coming across there. I meant to put those in earlier, but I forgot all about it. Um, I might use the rigger for this. Just take the rigger and just take a little. A little of anything really. I don't, I don't want it too strong. I'm just going to pop in a few little... Actually before I do that... No, I'll leave it, I'll leave it um, white. Then just pop a few little... Little posts. We've got a, some foreground, a few little foreground uh, bits of foliage and whatnot, just in here. Again, brush is fairly dry. A lemon yellow paint's grey. I think I'll uh, actually there's a little bit of a few little bushes and stuff down there. Bit of green over on this side. So I think I'll leave it like that. Might just put a little, just needs a little focal point. I'll just stick a little figure somewhere. It's only small. Um, let's just put him over there, just walking along. Maybe just like a little. Oh, 
then last but not least just get a dark colour on your brush I mean pop your signature in the corner let's go somewhere I'm just looking for somewhere that's dry and that's uh, just a quick impression of um, River in Connemars. Let's have a closer look at it. So here's our finished painting. Let's have a look at the um, photograph. From the picture, I've kept it pretty much the same. The only thing I really left out is this tree on the right hand side, but everything else is in the composition. So the sky, remember how I put the sky in and then took the clouds out with the tissue. The re main reason for that. So you can see the profile of the uh, the hillside there, all the way down. It's no coincidence that that's light and that's a bit dark. I remember light against dark, trying to get counter change all the way through, helps bring your paint into light. And then I've done the same here at the bottom of the hillside. That's why I used the tissue to line it again, again to bring out the profile of the middle ground here, all the way along. Our little figure there on this path. See how I stop the painting just to bring out this paint path right down the scene going off into the distance. Now if you remember with the waterfall it was basically a case, it was the same colours as the rocks which mainly sort of raw sienna, burnt umber and ultramarine and then using a, a very dry brush just a quick sweep and then a dry brush so that it leaves a lot of the paint on paper unpainted and that's where you get the effect of the water and then the sort of surf at the bottom and then same, same thing with the um, with the river as it continues a few quick sweeps, leave the white bits gives the impression of the surf as it continues its path to the sea and then we have to re-wet re it and then a quick scrape with the card and you get sort of instant rocks very easy to overdo once it once you get started, but such a simple method and that can look quite effective. Finally, there was just a bit of green foliage here in the foreground just to add another layer depth to the painting. Well, thanks for sending the photo, John. That's uh, I hope you like that quick impression of um, Connemara. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.